In this tutorial, we're going to create a layout in Godot, i.e. we're going to add some text and a health indicator. For that, we are going to learn some new things. So far, we always placed sprites via pixel positions. In fact, we always placed everything via pixel positions. In Node2D, a sprite, an animated sprite, a marker 2D, they are always placed via an X and a Y position. However, for layouts, we are going to learn about a different system. They basically work via ratios. That is because when you want to create a layout, you usually want to have something right in the middle of the window or to cover the left half of the window or something like that. You don't really care about specific pixel positions. You want to have some relative positioning. And that is what we're going to learn about. I suppose let's jump right in. Back in Godot, here we have the level scene open and I, with the level node selected, want to add a label node. And you can see this one is green. All of the layout nodes or control nodes in Godot are green and that tells you that those are working slightly differently. But let's select a label. And there in the inspector, you can see we can write some text. That text also appears and that's looking pretty good. Now, you can also simply drag this text around perfectly fine. But that's not really what you're supposed to do. Also, I accidentally move the background. That you can prevent by locking it with this icon, which I really like to do. In fact, let's do the same thing to the stars, to the borders, and to the meteors and lasers. They shouldn't be selectable at all. The only thing we should be able to move is the ship and the text. So we can move the text around and if I start the game, this is also working totally fine. But that's not really how you're supposed to use them. Instead, you can see some green needly pin kind of things and at the top, we have a couple of selection options. The one you should care about the most is the drop down one and in there, you can set an anchor. For example, you can set the text right to the center of the window. Although you can see that the center right now is the center of these needle points. And if I select the top left, you can see this a bit better. We are always relative to these pins. Now you could try to expand them with the bottom right symbol, but that doesn't work right now. The reason for that is that you shouldn't really mix control nodes and 2D nodes. They tend to confuse each other. But a good way to connect them is with another node, and this one is called a canvas layer. Usually you put control nodes right on there. And if I put the label on there, you can now see, if I zoom out, that the pins are covering the entire window. And with that, I can now select the center, and the text is indeed in the center. This would also work with all of the other positions. Understanding these kind of control nodes, especially in the beginning, is probably one of the most confusing parts of Godot. Basically, you always want to use a canvas layer, and then you want to use the anchors to position the text in a certain spot. In my case, I want the text to be at the top. And later on, this would be the score. So it would just display a number, let's say one, two, three, and four. And while we are here, we can also set the horizontal alignment to center that looks a bit better. Also, to style this one a bit more, you could set a theme and this theme would be quite powerful. It could send the font, the color, the style of the font, but that's quite a bit. What we want to do instead is the theme override. And there you can customize everything individually. For example, for the color, we can have a font color with whatever you want. Let's go with something slightly blue, I suppose. That looks about right. Next up, you can also customize the font. And the font is simply going to be a file we have in our graphics folder. If I minimize the stars and look at font, there we have a font. Although you can simply go to quick load and then, and then Godot is going to find all of the font files in the project. We only have a single one. So open that one. And now we get a different kind of font. To make it a bit larger, you want to go to font size, Tick the box and then make this thing quite a bit larger. Uh, you probably want to go to a fairly large number, let's say 50. And that looks reasonably okay. Let's try to run the game. And there we have a score all the way at the top. And I do not like the color. Uh, let's go to color and simply change this to a pure white. I think that works better. Righty, with that, we have some basic text. 
However, I don't like this text to be right at the top. And to fix that, we can learn about another system or another node to be a bit more specific. And that is called a margin container, which wants to have a child. And now some weird stuff happened. Basically, the margin container also needs to be set in a specific position, which I want to be the top left. And then the margin container will become the container for the label. So the label now cannot be set anymore on its own. Instead, the margin container is taking over the positioning. And well, we have set it in the top left, so so far, no difference. But what we can now do is once again, go to theme overrides and make sure you are in the margin container. And there you can go to constants. And now if I expand this window, we have margin top. And in there you can set some margins. I wanna go with 20. And now if I run all of this, we have the text with a bit of an offset at the top. Those are the two main things you have to learn about control nodes. Number one, they are always set via an anchor, this system at the top. And besides that, you have lots of nodes that organize other nodes, like a margin container, for example. Another node that we are going to need is called an HBox container. This one is arranging its children along the horizontal axis. You can actually see it at the bottom. Let's add this one. And I want this node to be in the bottom left. And to this, I want to add another node, which is a texture rectangle which is basically a Sprite 2D except as a control node. So if I add this, we cannot see anything by default because we have to add a texture. And for this one, once again, I like to use quick load because in there we have the different lives. So if you type life, you can see life one with the different colors. Since the player ship is red, I wanna go with player life one red. If I now press enter, we have one life in the bottom left. Although this one is a bit squashed. This happens because of the stretch mode that we have scale. I want to go with keep. You can customize the sizing here quite substantially, but I want to keep it simple. Now, what is really important about the HBox container is that if we duplicate a texture rectangle, we always add a child to the right or on the horizontal axis. What you can also do with the HBox container selected, you can once again go to theme overrides, constants, and then set a separation. That tells you how much separated these are in pixels. And with that, we have a couple of lives at the bottom. Although for those, I also want to have some margins. And to make that work, we need another margin container with the HBox container being a child of that. Once again, the system. At the moment, we have the margin container in the top left, but this one should rather be in the bottom left. And then I can zoom in, go to theme overrides, constants, and give it a margin on the left and a margin at the bottom. I suppose we can go with 10 for each of those. Although actually the bottom we already get because of the scaling behavior. So that one's totally fine. And with that, we have a reasonably sized UI. That is looking not too bad. Cool, that is covering the UI for the game. And let's rename this to UI. Although that being said, this UI should probably be its own scene because it does get quite complex. To achieve that, you can simply right click and then somewhere in there, you can save the branch as a scene. If you click on that, you can save a new scene and I want to keep that inside of my scenes. If I now save it, we have replaced this with a UI and we can open it and there we have the entire layout quite nicely done. Now, understanding this system is incredibly important. So let's do an exercise. I want you to create the game over screen. It should look something like this. Just to be clear, game over and your score should both be in the middle and they should be aligned along the vertical axis. After that, there should be space to start again or press space to start again all the way at the bottom with a bit of padding. Also, you do want to have a background for all of this. That's also important. And as a tip, the background color is a hexadecimal code that you can see on the screen right now. If you don't know what the hexadecimal code is, just don't worry about it and pick a random color. Besides that, a couple of useful nodes are going to be color rect, vbox container, and center container. They do what the name applies. So pause the video now and see how far you get. All right, back inside of Godot. 
I want to create a new scene and this should be a user interface. For this part, by the way, we don't need a canvas layer like for the UI because we are not going to mix 2D nodes with control nodes. We simply work with control nodes. Let's rename the node right away to game over and save it under scenes with game over. That one looks good. And now we can build the layout. First of all, I want to create a color rectangle for the background color. And this one has a white color at the moment that you can customize to whatever you like. And down there, you can see a hexadecimal code. If you don't know what that means, basically the first two numbers are for the amount of red, the third and fourth number is for the amount of green, and the final two numbers are for the amount of blue. So for example, if I set all of this to only have red with the full amount, we get FF for red and then zero for everything else. If I remove the amount of red and only have green, then we get zero, zero, FF and zero, zero. The F might throw you off. The scale for this goes from zero to F. So zero to nine, then we go to A, B, C, D, E and F. That way you have a few more values to work with. But ultimately, nobody really works with these numbers manually. Instead, you use a color picker or some kind of slider to just pick a color you like. In my case, I already did all of this in Photoshop and this is the color I want. If I now click out of the box, we are getting this spacey looking background purple. Although at the moment, it only covers a very small part of the window. To fix that, we want to go to the anchor and fill the entire window. That looks much better. Then we can rename this thing to BG and then lock it so it doesn't get in the way. Cool, that covers the first part. Next up, I want to place some text in the middle of the window. For that, I'm going to use a center container, which by itself has to cover the entire window. This one, as a child, is going to get a label where we can write game over. Although that's not the only thing I want to have in there. There should be another piece of text right below. And for that, I'm going to give the center container a child, which would be a V box container, and then place the label in there as a child. This one right now doesn't do anything, but if I duplicate the text, now we get two labels right on top of each other. The second label should say something like score zero. We're gonna change this later via code anyway, so don't worry too much about it. Also, both of those should be centered. So horizontal alignment, center for both. After that, we have to set some styling. Under theme overrides, I want to go to font and then quick load the tsunami.ttf file. Also under font size, I want to have a custom font size. Let's go with 60, looks about right. The same thing we want to do to the score in there. Under theme overrides, fonts, we want to quick load the font once again, and then go to font sizes. And I guess for this one, 25 maybe. Something like that, simply play around with the numbers and see what looks good. And with that, we have the center text. So now we can minimize this and work on the final bit. For this, I want to have some text at the bottom with a bit of a margin that says, let me add the label. It should say press space to start again. This text should be in the center bottom. And for that, I want to use a margin container with this label being a child of that. And now this system should be fairly straightforward. I want to place the margin container in the center bottom and then go to theme overrides, constants, give it a margin at the bottom of let's say 20 pixels. Just choose whatever you want in here. Finally, in the label, we have to give this thing a theme override as well, where we have quick load, the tsunami.ttf, and a font size of 25 as well. Or maybe this one could be a bit smaller, 20. These numbers are fairly subjective. And all right, with that, we have a layout. That is actually looking not bad at all. That covers another really important part of Godot. So by now, you should have at least a basic understanding of how to create layouts. Now, this system becomes much more powerful. If you look at the control nodes, there is quite a bit of material you could be working with. So this will take you a while to learn. But if you get used to it, it's incredibly powerful. And as a matter of fact, all the Godot layout is itself made with this kind of system. 
But anyway, next up, we're going to make the UI work, which would give us an actual game. 